It's up! Jake Huger, Anna Kasparian with you guys. America, I welcome thee. <laughs> you guys should go to a quick tight shot on Jake so I can fix my hair. Okay. All right. Listen, guys. <laughs> uh, so listen, we do have an amazing show for you guys. Of course, uh, Elon Musk blows up, but not in the way that you would expect, or at least something of Elon Musk uh, blow up, blows up. That might help you understand it. Uh, we have monstrous Republicans on the show, uh, to which, of course, everybody screams, "Of course you do!" And uh, and then Ann Coulter takes a twist. I wonder why she did that. Uh, interesting. So, without further ado, the Lady Kasparian. Yes, hey, what's up? All right, so you you excited about the news today, Jake? I am. All right. I am. The first story is going to be difficult to get through. It's going to make me incredibly angry. We put it at the me top too. of the show so the anger will subside as we continue on with the rest of the rundown we have prepared for you guys. But will I want to give you proper warning because if you feel the way I feel about this story, it is disturbing to say the least. Without further ado, let's do it. I know that a 10 year old might not understand pregnancy. But I also know that a 10 year old understands life and playing with dolls. I know when my daughter was 10 years old, she cried and begged for a little sister or a baby. You just heard from a woman who thinks it's a great idea to force, literally force a 10 year old girl who has been impregnated by a rapist to Bring that pregnancy to term and go through the traumatic experience of labor and childbirth. Who is that woman, you might ask? Her name is Laura Streetman, and she's the executive director of the Cincinnati Right to Life organization. During this hearing by the Ohio House's Constitutional Resolutions Committee on Tuesday, she again argued that the 10 year old who was in headlines months ago after she was impregnated by a rapist should have been forced to have that rapist baby. Let's watch more of what she had to say. While a pregnancy might have been difficult on a 10 year old body, a woman's body is designed to carry life. That is a biological fact. It is not designed to have disgusting death instruments remove her preborn child from her womb both situations would be difficult, but we know for a fact that every single time life wins. And that again is a statistical fact. It's a terrible, tragic situation. And I'm sorry the rapist did not, the abortionist did not report the rape. And I'm sorry that the mother permitted this. So not only is she demanding that a horrible thing happen to a 10 year old girl. She also lies about how the rape was not reported, the rape absolutely was reported. In fact, just to give you guys a little more context in case you missed that story, it had to do with the 10 year old girl who again was impregnated by a rapist. But because of abortion restrictions in the state of Ohio, her family had to take her to Indiana in order to get the abortion. And that story made headlines for obvious reasons. These anti-abortion laws that are passing in red states are incredibly cruel. And then there seems to be a consensus on that. Even when it comes to Republican lawmakers, they try to deflect from the story. They try to run away from the story. But not this woman, Laura Streetman thinks it's totally fine to openly, transparently, candidly urge local governments to force 10 year old girls to give childbirth, to give birth to, to a baby. Which, by the way, she's wrong about other things, including the safety of someone that young delivering a baby. I'll give you more details on that in just a moment. Yeah. So I have a 10 year old daughter, and this woman is a lunatic. But she's not alone. 
they're not a lot of them. They're a tiny, very loud mouth minority of religious zealots and fundamentalists. And they don't believe in democracy. So this is important context. In Ohio, they're trying to move ballot measures for them to pass from 50%, which is normal democracy, to 60%. Why? Because they know that they're a tiny minority. That the overwhelming majority of the people of Ohio and the country do not want to force 10 year olds to have their rapist babies. That's a lunatic position. But the right wingers want it, they want it, and the Republicans always cater to their base. So they're like, okay, let's have a legitimate debate. A 10 year old, a 10 year old, you guys, a lot of you have had 10 year old kids. I mean, how, how do you, first of all, it's gonna kill the kid. Are you insane? Second of all, you're gonna force a 10 year old to have their rapist baby? Are you doubly insane? And yeah, the answer is. is definitively yes. Yes, yes. And um, just notice the zealotry when it comes to this particular issue. And the argument that they will give is our zealotry is justified because we care about human lives, right? They they pretend like they see the zygote as a human life, uh, that they see this rapist fetus as a human life and should force the 10 year old to bring that pregnancy to term and go through the process of childbirth, okay. Notice that there's no zealotry on the right when it comes to the endless school shootings that actually slaughter children who are living, breathing, and viable outside the womb. You know, no zealotry when it comes to doing something about that. Really yeah. weird, right, Jenk? No, she like this. She, guys, this the, for the religious zealots. It never listen. Like their words are irrelevant. Like they say, "Oh, I'm pro-life." It's okay, let's get the AR-15s out of society so that we don't have these kids butchered in our schools. I mean, you care about protecting kids' lives, right? They're like, no, 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 I don't actually care about that at all, at all, at all. Because of my AR-15 and my right to murder you is like way more important than my pro-life position. They're all liars. All they wanna do is control people and, and make, them, make sure that we follow their weirdo interpretation of religion. The answer is hell no. It's all look. Are you telling? Look, I like I said, I got a ten-year-old. If you this lunatic, I don't care if it's the any legislator. I don't care what laws they pass. You are not going to get in my way when I'm going to go protect my daughter. And if you, oh no, 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 we will punish you if you dare protect your daughter. We're going to have massive issues. Massive. You think you're the only ones who can get riled up? We can get riled up. So. No, I'm not having this. No one's having this. Will you, for God's sake, vote the bums out? These Republicans are lunatics. Absolutely. Vote them out. Otherwise, they always do this. And the minute they get into office, they're like, okay, change the laws, change the laws so we can't lose. Don't make it 50%, make it 60%. Don't, do we gerrymander it so that we don't have to have the majority? No, of course, you don't want the majority because you aren't the majority. You're a big, loudmouth, right wing, tiny minority. It's time to shut them up already. And by the way, Jake is not wrong when he says that it is a tiny minority, even among conservative voters. Poll after poll shows that the vast majority of Americans are supportive of maintaining reproductive rights. They might not personally like abortion, they might not ever want to take advantage of that reproductive right, but they don't want to take that away from other people. They don't want the government between women and their doctors. They don't want the government making these intimate decisions on behalf of women. And to those Republican voters, I commend you for speaking out. But for the love of God, please reject policymakers who pass these restrictive laws in these red states that only serve to control women, to make their lives much more difficult. And even in cases where women aren't even seeking to get an abortion, but had a failed pregnancy and need medical attention as a result of that. There have now been so many stories in the headlines about women who weren't able to secure the health care they needed because the doctors are terrified that if they go through with aborting that failed pregnancy, that already failed pregnancy, they might be sued. They might have to deal with litigation. They might have to deal with some serious consequences from the state. Is that really the type of state we wanna live in, country we wanna live in? 
But let me let me give you some more details about um, how stupid this woman is because she pretends like no 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 this is what this is what females were made for, right? Ten year old girl, that's what her body is made for. Except she's wrong. It's incredibly dangerous to be a pregnant woman in the United States as it is because of our broken healthcare system. But it's even more dangerous when we're talking about literal ten year old girls. So let's go to the World Health Organization and the National Institute of Health. What do they have to say? Well, they published research finding that globally, adolescents giving birth are at higher risk of severe childbirth complications, including severe bleeding and systemic infections. Of course. And the children delivered from adolescent and teenage birth are more likely to be underweight, which may lead to future illnesses and physical and mental disabilities. But I mean science, who cares about science? I mean, this woman is a weird zealot who wants to control other people's bodies because of what her religious doctrine tells her. Let me give you more though. Think about the untold mental health damage that will be done to a 10 year old girl who is forced to give birth to a rapist baby. Just think about that. She also incorrectly stated that abortion is never necessary, never necessary to save a mother's life. Except that's a lie. The abortion, the Ohio abortion ban has been blocked indefinitely since last October, while Indiana has banned abortion with limited exceptions. So if that 10 year old were pregnant today, she would run into even more problems because Indiana has banned abortion. Now Ohio is considering a constitutional amendment to protect reproductive rights and anti-choice conservatives like Streetman are fighting it every step of the way. The fall ballot proposal would assure access to abortion until what is called viability. I think that is the right way to go when the fetus could survive outside the womb. It also would protect caregivers from being punished for performing the procedure or aiding the process. So that is why this woman is so fired up that there is an effort currently underway in Ohio to protect women's reproductive rights. Yeah, so I'm gonna go to a couple of members here because they said it really well. Mickey C, the Silver Dragon said, she said that a woman's body is made to carry a baby. When did a 10 year old become a woman? I was thinking the same exact thing. That's a little girl, not even a teenager, neither her body nor her mind are even close to carrying a baby. Look, this is obvious to all sentient human beings. But when you become a religious fundamentalist, you lose touch with all logic and reason, etc. Look at a tiny little 10 year old girl and you think, yeah, she should be used to carry babies. Even if she's raped, like they don't understand that they're monsters, and they go around lecturing us as if they're the moral ones. Oh, we are more moral. We are pro-life. We are no. You're ten thousand times less moral. You're evil incarnate. Oh my God, did I offend your stupid feelings? Oh, you get to call other people evil, but when you're actually evil and we call it out, oh no, you can't do that. I'm a religious fundamentalist. No. Get away from our kids. In fact, the throat goat dragon rights and another member, if you force your 10 year old to give birth, you should have child protective services called on you. 100%, 200%. And by the way, look at that liar. She, she said, oh, the mother permitted this about how they didn't report the, the rape. What an unbelievably terrible lie about the mom. What a disgusting human being this person is. You don't hide behind religion to do your evil. Just because you use a religion card doesn't mean you're moral, especially with the right wing in this country. And by the way, in a lot of other countries, including Muslim countries and other countries, the people who use the religion card are almost always the most immoral people in the country. I mean, that woman's face looks evil. The way that she's like scowling, <laughs> you know, at lawmakers as she's giving this disgusting speech. So, what I mentioned earlier, the effort to protect reproductive rights in Ohio, that is a potential fall ballot proposal. The goal is to have that proposed amendment on ballots this November for voters to weigh in on. And considering what happened in some other red states when it came to reproductive rights, you can understand why Streetman is very concerned here because the majority of Americans want to protect reproductive rights. Again, they do not want the government to get in between them and their doctors, them and their healthcare needs. Now, her speech though, Streetman's speech, was part of her submitted testimony in favor of House Joint Resolution 1. 
which would actually make it much harder to pass uh, the reproductive rights amendment because of pro abortion groups advocating for a constitutional amendment to protect the reproductive rights of women in Ohio. The resolutions committee is hearing testimony on uh, the on HJR one uh, to increase the percentage of votes required to pass such amendments from 50% to 60%. So basically increase the threshold to make it even more difficult for that to go through. Because they know that people don't agree with them. They know it for a fact. They know it. If you thought the majority was on your side, would you move the ballot measures to 60%? Of course you wouldn't. But Republicans in Ohio know for an absolute fact that they are the minority. That the majority of citizens of Ohio, including other Republicans, do not agree with them. They do not agree with them. But as usual with the Republicans these days, well, we hate democracy. So if it gets gets in the way of our religious fundamentalism, well, I would much rather have a theocratic state like Saudi Arabia or Afghanistan than actually have a democracy. So Republicans in Ohio, just be honest about it. You hate our country, you hate our rights, and you just want to oppress us with your insane lunatic interpretation of your religion. Speaking of which, she said, "Oh, you know what? I, they didn't even report the rape." She lied about it. So, but, but I know she lied about it. But guys, think about it. Why did the right wingers want them to, to report rape in order to be able to get the abortion in these laws? Because they don't believe them. They think that they're making it up. Do you think the ten-year-old was making it up? Do you think she consented? You would have. To Again, you just, There's they're forcing us, us to call them monsters and lunatics. A 10 year old girl was gonna consent and you're not, and you're skeptical about it. And you think that her body can carry a baby to term and, and risk, in, risk killing that 10 year old girl. What kind of monsters are you? I was like 85 pounds when I was 10 years old. I'm not even exaggerating. Now I know, I, I know, I have a 10 year old. These are the biggest monsters, the most evil people in the country. And by the way, we're not right wingers. So when I say shut them up, I don't mean like the way the right wingers say, "Oh, ban them, don't do, don't, don't let them speak, don't let them speak, don't let them speak." Okay, cut off their mics, etc. No, no, no. You speak. I like when you tell us how evil you are. So when I say shut them up, I mean through your votes. Yes. Otherwise, these monsters are going to pass laws. That are gonna affect all of us, including your kids. All right, I'm gonna take a break. Let's do that. When we come back, we have some updates on Andrew Lester, the man who shot a 16 year old who happened to end up at his address mistakenly. Stick around, we've got that story and more. All right, back on TYT, Jake, Anna, Daphne, and JV. Uh, they just joined by hitting the join button below the video on YouTube. We appreciate it, guys. Everybody can do it at tyt.com slash join. Help us bring out the truth and do real news and passionate news instead of, oh, a 10 year old was raped and people would like to give her, have her deliver. Let's debate yeah, it. How, 50, do you, how do you cover that story calmly? I just don't understand people who can robotically recite the details of that story. I, we're talking about actual human lives, okay? And in this case, the 10 year old was fortunate in being able to get an abortion in Indiana. But considering that abortion is now banned in Indiana, think about all the other girls and women who are going to be terrorized by these disgusting anti reproductive rights bills and laws that are passing all over the place. Real quick, though, I wanted to kind of share just to give you a sense of what kind of people we're talking about here, okay? So the president of the Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America group, right? This is a group of anti-abortion lunatics. Their president has lost her mind over Donald Trump and his statement about how he is against pursuing legislation that would ban abortion nationally, okay? It's never enough for them, okay? They claim that they wanted to, I mean, this is the guy who did their bidding, who succeeded in appointing and confirming three insanely conservative Supreme Court justices who reversed 
Roe v. Wade, effectively allowing for these red states to reverse any reproductive rights they might have had in those states. But it's not, it's not good enough. It's not good enough until, what's her name? Marjorie Dannenfelser has say over what happens in California or New York or any other state that isn't passing policies to her liking. Shut up and sit down. I mean, it's amazing to me that in her mind, Trump isn't extreme enough for her. Yeah, yep, I'm not surprised by it though. There's nothing that's ever extreme enough for the extremes. All right. All right. Let's move on to something completely different, but equally as infuriating. It's an update on the shooting that we talked about earlier this week in Missouri. What was your reaction when you heard that your grandfather shot Ralph Yarrell for ringing his doorbell? I was disgusted. I thought it was terrible. Uh, we, my, myself and my family stand with Ralph Yarrell and seeking justice. It's a uh, this is a horrible tragedy, it never should have happened. The man who is speaking to Don Lemon in that video is Clint Ludwig, who is the grandson of Andrew Lester, the 84 year old man who shot 16 year old Ralph Yarl in the head last week. Now luckily, Ralph Yarl survived the shooting, miraculously survived the shooting. And the shooter that you see in the video there, he was finally, uh, charged for the shooting. Uh, initially, he was not charged, but after some backlash, prosecutors decided, decided to charge him. Now, when the prosecutors gave a press briefing on the on the matter, they just very vaguely mentioned that there is a racial component. Yarl is a 16 year old black boy. Uh, the 84 year old shooter here, uh, Andrew Lester, is a white man. And so, in this interview. Lester's grandson makes an argument about what kind of behavior he's noticed about his grandfather. Before we get to that, did you want, let's actually go to the next video, let's watch. Well, the prosecutor in this case has suggested that there was a racial component to it. Do you believe your grandfather is racist? Uh, I believe he holds, holds racist tendencies and beliefs. Why do you say that? Uh, He's just a stock American Christian male. It's a uh, older, you know. That's just how they are. It's uh, the conspiracies and weird, random, racist things that they say. Yeah, so and it doesn't make sense, but they're just scared. So clearly, the grandson there is saying that. You know, his grandfather is racist. He's scared. He believes in conspiracy theories. I'm going to go to one more video, and then we'll discuss. Now, listen, you're generalizing a lot here about you said older Christian white males, but what do you mean by that? What do you mean they're scared? Talk to me more, please. Uh, yeah, just uh, I feel like a lot of people of that generation are caught up in this uh, 24 hour news cycle of fear and paranoia perpetuated by some other news stations. And he was fully into that, sit and watch uh, Fox News all day, every day, blaring. In his living room, and I think that stuff really kind of reinforces this negative view of, of minority groups and leads people to be a little. This doesn't necessarily lead people to be racist, but it reinforces and galvanizes racist people and their beliefs. So it's worth noting that his brother Daniel Ludwig disagrees with that take. We're going to get to his statements in just a moment, but I wanted to open it up for discussion now. What do you think about what his grandson is saying, James? Look, I think these things are obvious, except for the gaslighting, right? So almost all of us have at least one family friend that this has happened to, Brain Rot from Fox News, and it's good. They're good people. I mean, our family friends. Just the most wonderful people you've ever seen help my dad as a young Muslim immigrant that came to this country. Like, I can't begin to describe how, what a wonderful person he is. Watched Fox News for a couple of years and then now it's against immigrants. It's the power of propaganda. Right. I mean, propaganda is incredibly powerful. It just is. And I've seen it happen to various people in my life as well, whether they're watching. Fox News or they're relying on social media and all sorts of questionable websites that aren't exactly credible for their news. And I don't know what the immediate solution is, but I do think it's really important to as part of curriculum 
teach media literacy in high school. Yeah, just uh, but look, guys, this doesn't just affect the right wing. I've seen it affect a lot of people. It does. Okay? It does affect a lot of people. Like, so, not everybody, and remember, everybody's different, right? But a certain percentage of the population, when they see something on air or they read it in print, they just assume it's true. That's true. Yeah, one hundred percent. They don't even question it. But but once their mind is set, like someone has captured their mind, then if they see other things in print or on air, they just totally ignore it. It's just it's an amazing sociological phenomenon, and so. And, and does Fox News, I love the words that he used, and, and we're gonna get to what we said about this earlier and how we could see this coming, because it's relevant to the story. But I love the words that that grandson used. It, it doesn't necessarily create racism, but it reinforces and galvanizes people who had leanings in that direction, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And if you watch Fox News, that is not a debatable proposition. They're constantly talking about oh, the black culture and the cities are burning and they're coming for us. Remember the 2020 campaign, Trump? Oh, Biden's America, everything's going to burn down. And the minorities and they're, the caravans of immigrants, they're coming for you. And remember- White replacement theory, yeah, all of that stuff. So guys, the only reason you debate that is if you're having a gaslighting conversation. It's all over Fox News, there's no question they're doing it. So for them to go, oh golly gee, did we call immigrants dirty and dangerous? And same thing about black people, golly gee, right? No, that's exactly what's happening. And unfortunately, it's literally brainwashing tons of people. And unfortunately, they're targeting the most vulnerable, people who are older. And you know, at 84, I don't know what his mental health situation was. But by the way, no excuses for that guy. That guy should definitely spend the rest of his life in jail. He uh, shot a teenager yeah. through a glass door. That was locked. It, it, Come he, on. He, he could have called the cops. Instead, he waited for minutes. It, he clearly see it's a teenager. The teenager clearly not trying to break in because he, he rang the doorbell and sat there for two to three minutes. And then the guy comes and murders him because he's been con No, no, he didn't murder him. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. He, I made he that mistake. He tried to murder him. He tried, he tried to, to murder yeah. him. Yeah. He's, again, Thank God he's luckily, alive. he has been discharged from the hospital. He is recovering. Again, it's like one of the most miraculous parts of the story, considering he was literally shot twice, once in the head. Yeah. Okay, a 16 year old, a teenager who ended up in the wrong address as he's trying to pick up his siblings, gets shot in the head. Welcome to America. Okay, so we've got more details for you. One more clip featuring the grandson, Clint Ludwig, and then we're gonna get to Ludwig's brother, Daniel, who has a different perspective. You said that your grandfather would say or do things uh, apparently that you did not subscribe to um, that caused you to distance yourself from him. Say and do things like what? That's right. Uh, a lot of it was the uh, kind of QAnon level conspiracies about election denying. And then uh, they got really weird with some, some Fauci dogs. I really didn't know what that meant, uh, but I would push back on some of this stuff and he couldn't handle being pushed back on. And at a certain point, we kind of lost touch and uh, I think it was more of his choice than mine. I think a lot of people can relate to that as well, right? Just the inability to have a relationship with family members who have different perspectives and might push back on some of the conspiracy theories that family members have bought into thanks to the propaganda that is just repeated over and over again in certain types of media. Okay, I just gotta jump one thing. So these conspiracy theorists are always the touchiest people on earth. They'll say like, oh, I think that the Democrats and Tom Hanks go and murder children and eat their brains. And you go, I think that it's probably not true. And they go, how dare you insult me? Dude, you just said people are eating babies. I mean, that's not insulting. But me saying, mm, I don't think you're right at all about things you're saying that are clearly insane is like, how oh, dare you? Of course they eat the baby's brains. Uh, like, what do you? I know. You, you can't get offended if you say crazy crap like that. I know, but you know what also doesn't help? And everyone just calm down, okay? Because I'm not trying to make excuses for QAnon or anything like that. But what doesn't help is the way media handles certain theories or certain claims 
Like for instance, the COVID lab leak theory, right? They immediately brush that off and claim that is not true, definitely not true. Look away, look away. And look, I'm saying that because when it comes to trying to have a conversation with people who believe some of these conspiracy theories that are so outlandish, how do you debunk what they believe if the sources you need to rely on happen to be legacy media outlets who have lied, who have covered up stories? So, but Anna, that actually I would argue is part of this same phenomenon. Mm-hmm. So let me explain. So, yes, Fox News brainwashes people into like, oh, the others are dirty and dangerous and they're coming for you, and you should probably shoot them on your porch. But CNN and New York Times brainwashes you into corporate rule is fantastic. We shouldn't change anything. The status quo is great. If a politician takes up millions of dollars in bribes, it's not really a bribe. Look away, look away. So when they, so they have their own set of lies. And by the way, if you talk to someone who watches CNN and, New York and reads New York Times and you tell them they're watching propaganda, they'll be just as outraged yep. as the other conspiracy yep. theorists. And so when they say, "Oh, a lab leak that would involve government officials doing making mistakes," of course not. The powerful are always right. Well, you sound like a lunatic. And then that then they, the other side then latches onto that and go, "Well, I know that's a lie." And then they tell me the politicians are honest, even though they're taking millions, in fact, billions of dollars from drug companies. See, that's a giant lie that mm-hmm. makes them go, "Oh, the whole thing's a fraud." I mean, every- everybody knows that Pfizer's not going to give you like tens of millions of dollars to all these greasy, corrupt politicians for their health. They're doing it to bribe them, right? And mainstream media goes, "No, they're not. They're all very honest and wonderful people." So there's propaganda everywhere, and it is literally driving the country crazy. It is. It is hundred percent. All right. So I want to now move on to what. Clint Ludwig's brother is saying because his brother Daniel disagrees. He has a different perspective. Daniel Ludwig doesn't think his grandfather would have opened fire had Ralph not gone for the door, the older sibling told the Kansas City Star. So he doesn't think that it has anything to do with racism. He genuinely thinks that his 84 year old grandfather was so scared that he felt the need to fire a gun through a glass door that was locked to shoot a 16 year old in the head. Okay, let's give you more. Daniel told the New York Times in a text that it was not accurate to describe his grandfather as espousing extreme right wing views and conspiracy theories, but he declined to comment in detail. These people are not close to him like I am, he said of other family members, adding that his grandfather was literally too nice. And had spoiled other relatives. Oh, come on, dude. Well, let's. He shot a 16 year old in the head. That's not what exactly what I'd call too nice. So, look, Daniel sounds like he kind of largely agrees with the grandfather, but I'm not. Daniel didn't kill any, try to kill anyone. Okay, he's defending his grandfather. I don't care. No, it's like, but I'm glad we're giving the context. Some family members think the guy was a racist who watched Fox News and and was headed in this direction, and others don't. We gave yeah. you the context. His, his ex-wife also spoke to the press, to the New York Times, to be specific, and she said she said that he had serious anger issues. And that's, of course he I mean, did. Of course he did. But he's very nice. He's to very nice. Yeah. Very nice. All right. So look, guys. The reason we show you predictions that we got right is because you, I want you to know that it's we're not Monday morning quarterbacking it. All of this stuff is super obvious, and it's so frustrating to us that the rest of the media is like, oh, I, I can't see it. I don't know what you're talking. Anyway, so in this case, here's yet another prediction we got right. Sharon Reddy writes in that old man is the victim of the fear mongering right too. What an effing mess. Look, he ain't victim of anything. I so I don't shed a single tear for that guy. He looks as mean and stupid as he apparently is. Uh, having said that, yes, they take all, both of these guys are older guys. Again, this is my speculation. I guarantee that they watch right wing media. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. Write it down in goddamn stone. They religiously watch right wing media, but I'm speculating. Well, again, of course, because it's obvious, guys. But they'll gaslight you and go, "Oh, you can't, you you don't know that he's watching Fox News." And it turns out, of course, he was watching Fox News all day. Now, just to give you an update on the shooter here, he is out on bond. So yesterday, he pleaded guilty to the charges of assault in the first degree and armed criminal action. 
He is out on $200,000 bond and is due back in court on June 1st. No, no, this is outrageous. He shouldn't get bond. And I know the people say, oh, hey, we should get rid of bail. No, no, we shouldn't. He's dangerous. But look at this guy. He could have murdered a 16 year old. So I'm guys, sorry, no, you, he needs to be in custody. This what if a nuts. lawyer goes to his door? What if a mailman goes to his door? He's, he's the most obvious danger to people's lives I've ever seen. And he's out on bond? No, he's like stole, he tried to murder that poor kid. Of course he should be in jail. All right, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna watch Marjorie Green make a fool out of herself. And um, I guess in this terrible news cycle, that's some, some of the most enjoyable content. We've got that and more coming up. Jank and Anna, but also Wood Dragon, uh, MJ Cook, and Rock and a Wall. Uh, well, actually, they all became members except Rock and a Wall uh, upgraded. You could also, not only can you join, but you could upgrade through the join button uh, on YouTube. And Chris Birch, American Hero, gifted uh, five more Young Turks memberships on YouTube. Thank you guys. Love when we look out for each other. Breaking news? Yes, uh, the Associated Press is reporting that Biden's reelection announcement uh, will come as soon as next week. So he is, in fact, planning to run for reelection. Great. Uh, why do I say great? Because that means all of the establishment Democrats will not be in the race. Uh, so they believe in bowing their heads to power, no matter how ridiculous and absurd, no matter how bad the polling is, no matter what the chances of losing to Republicans are. People like Gavin Newsom are weaklings, and so they will say, okay, right, uh, yes, sir, absolutely, sir. So there'll be no establishment Democrats in the race other than Joe Biden. So that leaves a lane for progressives to come in there and kick his ass. So obviously, Marianne Williamson's already in the race. By the way, she's already up to 10. Dude, she's actually kind of killing it right she now. She is. Um, like she keeps in increasing support in the yeah. polls. But on top of that, when it comes to young voters, they're actually pretty fired up about her. And Marianne Williamson's TikTok page is really blowing up. 100%, I told you this like a week or two yeah. ago. So they're calling her mom on TikTok. They are. And mom says it's okay to cut the defense budget. Okay. <laughs> And and by the way, you have to give Marianne Williamson tremendous credit. I do, yeah. Because she had the courage to actually step in there. And she knew what was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And I know that for a fact. She knew the media was gonna say, oh, uh, not credible and, and go after her for being spiritual, etc. Lie about her as they did last time around. And she's like, come for me. Uh, mom says Biden's not good enough. Okay, so we need someone to actually beat Republicans. You know what Biden's gonna do, he's gonna fall asleep on the campaign trail. And they can't look, the people in Washington care so much more about power and greed than they do about reality. So that's why when they see a poll showing Biden being deeply unpopular, they're like, no, no, he's the only one who can beat Trump. Why, there's tons of people who could be Trump, Trump's an imbecile. I guarantee you we're gonna hear the same arguments over and over a again. A thousand times, yep. by the way, Joe Biden nearly lost to Trump. 43,000 votes in three swing states. You know, Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton by 76,000 votes in three swing states, right? So these are razor thin margins, you know why? Because they take a deeply unpopular politician like Donald Trump and they run a deeply unpopular politician against them. Yep. Did you know that Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton were two out of the top three most unpopular presidential candidates in American history? And we were like, run Bernie, the Bernie's really popular. I can see the polls, why can't you read numbers? Bernie's killing Trump, they're like, no. It can't be, no one in power likes Bernie. Everyone in Washington thinks that he would end corruption and we don't like that. No, people love Hillary Clinton, no, the polling shows the people really hate her. No, she's the only one who could beat Trump. And this time around, you will see, it. I'll tell you ahead of time. Turn on to any cable news station, New York Times, NPR, turn to any of them and they will all robotically say, Joe Biden is the only one who could beat Donald Trump, even though he almost lost to him last But by the way, they'll never tell you that. They'll never even tell you that. He barely won by 43,000 votes. And he's way more unpopular now than when he was running last time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the thing is, Trump doesn't have the stink of coronavirus response on him anymore. Yeah. And 
it's gonna give him an advantage for sure. Biden's got the stink of coronavirus response on him. He's in addition a to a bunch of him. other things, right? Yeah. So yes, so we'll see how it plays out. I do give Marianne Williamson a lot of credit for you know putting her hat her name in the hat, especially given the treatment that she has already dealt with from you know establishment Democrats, from Biden's team with Karine Jean-Pierre during a White House press briefing mocking her and making fun of her. So it, it takes a tremendous amount of strength to do what Marianne Williamson is doing. And I think it's important for Biden to be challenged, especially by someone that is to the left of him. So uh, as I mentioned, the Associated Press is reporting this. They spoke to three individuals who are privy to the conversations. And uh, the people who of course spoke on condition of anonymity tell the Associated Press that they're not aware that a final decision about a final decision on timing. Like they know that it's probably gonna come out next week. They don't know the exact date, uh, but they do believe that the upcoming announcement will uh, be released in the form of a video uh, released to supporters. That's gonna be so exciting. And Biden has repeatedly said that he intends to run for a second term, but advisors say he felt little need to jump into campaigning right away. Probably because he's got certain advantages like the entire Democratic establishment rallying for him. He so. says which he's not really gonna campaign. I mean, he's gonna do super standard stump speeches that are gonna be so boring and nobody's gonna pay attention to him. Like if I was Biden, I would take one of my few advantages, which is that we have record low unemployment. And every day I'd be out there going record low unemployment, record low unemployment, best president ever, record low unemployment. What is he gonna do on the campaign trail? And everybody in Washington is gonna be like, oh, so brave and great. What a fighter. Like, guys, stop gaslighting us. We all have eyes. And in the old days, you could just lie in an, on an industrial scale and people believed you. Now the internet exists. We can see Joe Biden. We can see his poll numbers. They're disastrous. And by the way, the, the reason why people in power aren't even worried about Donald Trump is because they think Donald Trump can't win. I don't know anyone in the club who likes him. No, you schmucks, he has one giant advantage that you guys are completely blind to. He hates the establishment. And the country hates the establishment. So yes, he's got a thousand other problems and he's a monster and a liar and all those things. But when he goes F you to the establishment, everybody goes, oh, in Washington, they're like, oh, everybody hates that, right? They love the establishment, right? No, they hate the establishment. That's why he hasn't still has an excellent chance of winning. So don't just run this feeble dude, but they will unless we beat him. And yes, we should definitely beat them in a, beat Biden in a primary. Yes, a primary is a fantastic thing. Whoever has stronger primaries has a much better chance of winning the general election. You will hear 100% lies from the mainstream media telling you the opposite. They're like, did you know that in 1972, it really didn't help? And in 1980, it also did not help President Carter. Yeah, how about the last two elections? Where the Democrats had a giant primary in 2020 and they won. They fought each other and they won. And then 2016, the Republicans had a giant primary. They fought each other like nuts. They were talking about penis length and they won. They, they were talking about penis length. They that did, won. That did happen. Yep. Like strong, contentious primaries help the candidate win. But mark my words, every single News actor and pundit on TV will lie to you 24 seven about that and say primaries hurt. Why? Because they don't want the powerful challenge. Absolutely. All right, let's move on because Marjorie Green continues to be an embarrassment and this is definitely no exception, so. You can't lie about the facts, Secretary, Secretary Mayorkas. While you live in denial and sit over there with this attitude that you're doing everything Let's right, you are killing Let's Americans stand. with your policies. That actually ended up being the moment that got Congresswoman Marjorie Green and her ridiculous statements silenced during a GOP led House Homeland Security Committee hearing. Now let's watch the entirety of her statements with some more context. She's speaking to the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, and here's how that went. 
China is poisoning America's children, poisoning our teenagers, poisoning our young people. How long are you going to let this go on? Congresswoman, let me assure you that we're not letting it go on. We are fighting this. No, I reclaim my time. You're a liar. You are letting this go on and the numbers prove it. You can't lie about the facts, Secretary, Secretary Mayorkas. While you live in denial and sit over there with this attitude that you're doing everything Let's right, you stand. are killing Americans Let's with your policies. Stand. And that is a fact. Your policies are killing people, over 300 yeah. Americans a day, over 300, and it's outrageous. So that led to calls by Democratic lawmakers to essentially take down her remarks, which is different from striking her remarks from the record. And I'll tell you how in just a moment. So the Democrat who moved to take down her remarks was Congressman Benny Thompson. And Green's comments did in fact violate House rules. Look, I'm not one of these people who's like obsessed with decorum and like, oh, you must be you know, all buttoned up and decorum is so important. But she was out of line during that hearing, not just in her interaction with Mayorkas, but also in her interaction with Democratic lawmaker Eric Swalwell. We'll get to that later in the show. But here's what Republican, I'm sorry. So House Chair, the House Chair for this committee is Republican Mark Green, I'm sorry. The House chair is a Republican who agreed with Democrat Mark Green from Tennessee. Um, so <laughs> this is what Mark Green said. No, I'm sorry, Mark Green is a Republican from Tennessee, my bad. So Mark Green said this, it's pretty clear that the rules state that you can't impugn someone's character. Identifying or calling someone a liar is unacceptable in this committee. And I make the ruling that we strike those words. Um, and so Representative Dan Goldman, who's a Democrat from New York, uh, then noted that uh, Benny Thompson's motion to take down Green's remarks, not strike them, uh, taking them down would essentially end Green's ability to question Mayorkas further. The committee did just that. Green was not kicked out of the hearing, but she was prohibited from speaking further. So look, Asking tough questions of a secretary of a major department like the Department of Homeland Security, no problem with that. But throwing out accusations, calling him a liar, placing the blame on Mayorkas for the fentanyl crisis that we're dealing with in the country right now is not only inaccurate, it does break the house rules. And the reason why I say it's inaccurate is because no, the Department of Homeland Security doesn't have an open border policy where they're like, everybody bring in the fentanyl. We love watching Americans die on our streets. That is not what's happening. And that is what Marjorie Greene is making it seem like. Yeah, no, I disagree a little bit. So I think she's unhinged. Of course, I agree mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. You're definitely right about the border. The guy's about to say his policy, right? He's like, no, shut up, you're a liar. Let me tell you what your policy is. It's to let fentanyl from China in. We don't have a border with China. Anyway, long story, bottom line is, no, we don't have an open border policy. Ironically, she's the one lying about it. Okay, now having said that, I think the house rules are BS. You can't call someone a liar, why? Because they're all liars and so they don't wanna be called liars. So they set a rule saying, well, we're gonna ban you from calling us liars. They're politicians, almost all of them are liars, including Marjorie Taylor Greene. Right. So I, I just don't believe in that decorum. If I was there, I'd be calling them liars 24 seven. I think my issue isn't necessarily with her calling him a liar, right? Like I, I care way less about that. What I do care about is seeing lawmakers, whether it's a Democrat or Republican, I don't care, using these hearings specifically for their little performances mm -hmm. and spreading disinformation through their little performances, right? Yeah. Because it is, look, they all know what they're doing. These hearings are never meant to actually accomplish anything. I think you guys know that at this point. How many hearings have we talked about? Even hearings that have been called upon by Democratic lawmakers, even progressives. And it's always their moment for a soundbite that might go viral on social media. And then it'll give you the illusion that they're actually doing something to fight for you. When in reality, they're doing nothing. So they use these hearings to make a name for themselves, to go viral, whatever. And in this case, Marjorie Greene is spreading lies through her little performative um, actions. Yeah, but instead of complaining about it, if I was a Democrat on the other side, I'd be like, well, the, uh, the gentlewoman from Georgia is a giant liar. And let me explain why there is no open border policy. And she has lied about it hundreds of times. So she's 10,000 times the liar than anybody else is. But 
so but that's fighting fire with fire and Democrats would never do that. Look guys, on the performative stuff, I have a I have a slightly different take on it. So because so Anna's right, there's no question that they're using it for PR to get their names bigger. Republicans do it, Democrats do it. Everyone then, does it. Right. And then and then they raise by the way, the corporate guys don't do it much because they don't need the funds. They just get bribes from corporations. It's actually honestly progressives and and the extreme right that do it more. Okay, I'm being real with you guys. And by the way, one of the reasons they do that is because it raises a lot of money. Okay, so when you're seen as fighting the other side, you get grassroots money. And and to be fair to a guy like Matt Gates, he doesn't take corporate PAC money, so he needs to do that more to get grassroots funding. Okay, so that has set up a perverse incentive to put on the biggest clown show. Okay, but the part that I I want to draw your attention to on how it could be different is you can use those performances to put a spotlight on an issue and be incredibly effective. But what's so frustrating is that no one does that. So the right way to do it, for example, if you're a progressive in Congress, is to make a giant big stink and use some bad words, yell at a Republican, yell at a fellow Democrat, and then say about, for example, paid family leave. And then say, scream to everyone, 84% of the country wants it. Why won't these crooks pass it? Because they work for corporate donors and they're liars, right? That'll get a lot of attention and then people will go, huh? Paid family leave polls at 84%. Three quarters of Republican voters agree with it. Why aren't they passing it? That would be an effective way to use quote unquote performance, right? Mm -hmm. But no one does that. They only do it to build up their own reputations and to raise more money. And that's why we're all sick of politics. Now, before she had that interaction with Mayorkas, she had a pretty bad interaction with Eric Swalwell. There were calls for her statements to be taken down, but the chairman of this committee was unwilling to do so after the reaction with Eric Swalwell. So we're gonna get to that story after we take a brief break. So we'll start the second hour with that. And then we will also discuss well, what are all those corporate donors to attorneys general that helped perpetuate Donald Trump's big lie? Like they promised to stop donating money to those attorneys general. Did they keep the promise? We'll fill you in on that in the next hour. Come right back. Read the poll. Read the poll, Jack. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Young Turks. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, Cenk Uger, and I'll see you soon.